A few months ago, I published this video about Brian Johnson. He's the multimillionaire who is attempting to further anti-aging research by eating an extremely restrictive diet, by taking 100 plus supplements every day, and spending a boatload of money. I was more positive towards Brian's lifestyle than most people. I agree, aging sucks, and I find some of what he does inspiring, like how he prioritizes sleep. And it has actually inspired me to take some steps to improve my sleep, namely, I am eating earlier in the day, finishing my dinner, and everything I eat at 5 p.m., 5.30. Five months later, and I'm still eating popcorn right before bed, so it's going great. But at the end of the day, this is not research. Brian is just one person. No matter how much he tracks, how transparent he is, how many doctors he works with, he's just one person. No matter his results, his results are his results. So fast forward to three days ago, and I get this email from Brian, aka Blueprint, about his supplement line. It's launching this Thursday, April 4th, so probably today when this video is coming out. It's called the Blueprint Stack and consists of extra virgin olive oil, longevity mix, blueberry nut mix, nutty pudding, NAC plus ginger plus curcumin, red yeast rice plus odor-free garlic, essential soft gel, and essential capsule. This is supposedly what he takes every single day. It works out to $361 total, $331 per month because the olive oil comes with two bottles, a bottle less a month. Yes, $30 olive oil. <laughs> Shipping is free though, so there's that. So I would love to just say, hey, we don't need to do that. Like, we can just stop here. We don't need to go through and look at all of these because no one's going to buy this. No one's going to spend this much money on olive oil and blueberries and a multi. But people will, of course. I mean, not you guys, probably, people watching this, because I'm willing to bet that Brian's audience is largely male. My audience is largely not that. Regardless, I'm going to do what I always do with potentially scammy supplements. I'm going to go through each ingredient and see if the marketing claims match the evidence. Let's go right down the list. We start with extra virgin olive oil sourced from Australia or Portugal. It's supposed to be very high quality, very high in polyphenols, and it can support healthy weight management, promote emotional well-being, support health and longevity. <laughs> It's not vague at all. He calls it snake oil as like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because people call him a grifter, a snake oil salesman. Like, okay, it's funny, but you're also selling a 25 ounce bottle of olive oil for $30. That seems kind of insane to me. That said, it is not unheard of. The Consumer Lab top pick for extra virgin olive oil with high polyphenol content is $26.63 for 16.9 fluid ounces. So that is significantly more per ounce than the snake oil. Although it does have significantly more polyphenols than snake oil. As Consumer Lab notes, it's not clear if paying more for higher polyphenol content is even worth it. So not a great start. Longevity Mix condenses over 20 capsules into a delicious sugar-free drink. Yeah, monk fruit extract, delicious. The number of overly sweet monk fruit extract things, like, oh God, it's just disgusting. Vitamin C and magnesium, you can get plenty of this from food, but okay. 2.5 grams of creatine, which is a typical daily dose. And this may be particularly beneficial for vegans and vegetarians, at least in terms of muscle gain. Evidence for improvements in cognition is less convincing. Calcium alpha ketoglutarate, two grams supposedly supports improved frailty index in mice. Glucosamine sulfate promotes respiratory health and immunity. Glucosamine, along with chondroitin, is typically used to help manage arthritis symptoms, although results from studies are mixed. Now, there are several observational studies looking at glucosamine and respiratory-related symptoms, for instance, lung cancer, but a review questions the quality of these studies, concluding the studies cannot support the prescription of this supplement as a preventative measure for mortality, cancer, and other chronic diseases. Taurine. 1.5 grams. Brian doesn't tell us why we should take it on the landing page here. Examine.com says that evidence for most outcomes is underwhelming, but they do give a B ranking for studies looking at taurine and blood pressure. Glycine, this is a non-essential amino acid, 1.2 grams. It may help with sleep and fatigue, but the doses used in studies are more than double what is present here in longevity mix. Oh right, this is supposed to be for longevity, aka 
living longer. The closest we've come so far to that is the calcium AKG, but again, squeak, squeak. Lysine, 1.2 grams. While an essential amino acid, it does not hold much promise as a supplement beyond reducing the symptoms of herpes simplex. Brian telling on himself with this one. <laughs> Seriously though, he should already be getting a good deal of lysine from his diet. He eats a good amount of protein. He already takes protein powder. Ashwagandha root extract, 600 milligrams, as I talked about in my recent Abby Sharp new theory supplement review. There is decent evidence for ashwagandha as treatment for anxiety and stress, possibly sleep improvements as well, and 600 milligrams is a typical daily dose. That said, Consumer Lab recommends choosing a brand that lists the amount of withanolides per dose. Brian, Blueprint, doesn't do that. Glutathione, 250 milligrams, which Examine describes as an indirect and expensive way to provide dietary cysteine. And evidence for any benefit is underwhelming. Theanine, 200 milligrams, another amino acid. There's some evidence for improvements in stress, anxiety, and sleep. And 200 milligrams is a common dose. Finally, we have hyaluronic acid, 120 milligrams. Typically, this is used topically or injected intravenously, although there are several promising studies on oral use and skin hydration and wrinkles. So that's longevity mix. We have a powder with potentially small to modest benefits and a nebulous relationship to longevity, $39 a month. Blueberry nut mix. Now I do love that it's called blueberry nut mix and not like antioxidant superfood immunity complex or some shit, right? It's just blueberry nut mix because that's what it is. Freeze-dried blueberries, macadamia nuts, and walnuts. One serving is equivalent to half of a cup of blueberries. Okay, you know, like just eat real food, but someone could say that to me regarding my protein powder consumption. I eat protein powder almost every single day. Like, I don't know if this is how people want to get in their blueberries and omega-3s, whatever. Nutty pudding, this is the chalky stuff <laughs> that he eats every day. It's basically a protein powder. It also has a whole lot of omega-3s from flax, three grams of ALA, which is a lot. Sunflower lecithin for choline, Ceylon cinnamon, cocoa, so more polyphenols because I guess the blueberry mix and the olive oil, just, just not, not enough. The price is the best part though, $99 a month. NAC plus ginger plus curcumin. NAC and acetylcysteine. This is the more efficient and cheaper alternative to glutathione. Brian says it restores cysteine levels because cysteine deficiency is so common. Now, a lot of the lung benefits are based on its ability to loosen mucus when it is inhaled. So yeah, not really applicable here. There are studies on oral supplementation and specifically COPD patients with mostly disappointing results. Ginger extract for joint liver, pancreatic, immune system, and gastrointestinal health. Eh. Again, we're mostly talking about small studies with a few dozen participants. And not all of the results are positive. Finally, curcumin, the bioactive in turmeric. Brian wants you to take it for joint, brain, liver, and kidney. Joint? Yeah, maybe. Brain? I don't... <laughs> What does that even mean? Like cognitive function, uh, maybe depression? Skepticism is warranted as the studies comparing curcumin to placebo were not well designed and produced effect sizes not too far apart, even though the differences were statistically significant. At least this one isn't a hundred bucks. Red yeast rice plus odor-free garlic. That's just something I wanna take, you know? <laughs> Sounds delicious. So both of these supposedly are for heart health. There is limited evidence red yeast rice can lower cholesterol levels, but this depends on the amount of lovostatin that it contains. And most brands don't tell you how much lovostatin is in their product, including Blueprint. There is evidence for garlic and lower cholesterol levels too, but at much higher doses than what's in Blueprint. Essential soft gel. We've got vitamin K. I mean, he eats so many vegetables, like whatever. Lutein and zeaxanthin. These are both carotenoids that may support retinal and arterial health. Several studies have found a relationship between both of these and cataract prevention, but any benefit is more likely to be apparent in subpopulations of individuals exposed to high oxidative stress, such as heavy smokers, alcoholics, or those with low dietary intake of carotenoid-rich foods. Evidence on arterial health is mostly limited to animal studies. Lycopene for skin and arterial health. We do have a 
a couple small studies like this one that suggested reduced sensitivity to UV light with lycopene consumption. Artery health results are conflicting. Astaxanthin has been studied for a bunch of different conditions. Is pretty underwhelming. Vitamin K2, both MK4 and 7, often taken for bone health, even though the science is mixed. This recent meta analysis looking specifically at postmenopausal women found an effect, but the majority of the studies used combination therapy, right? So it was K2 and calcium, or K2 and D3. Finally, we have the essential capsule. This is $55 a month for a multi and a few extra things like nicotinamide riboside. This is gaining in popularity, although this review is very critical of current scientific literature. And it's got a probiotic of course. So as you can tell, I'm not super impressed by this supplement stack. I just hate supplement stack. <laughs> I hate that so much. I don't know why, but I'm not super impressed. And I'm even less impressed with the sciencey nature of some of the marketing. So one thing you'll see on many of these is this clinical trial equivalent doses, which is mostly true. I will give him credit there, right? Most of the time when I'm looking at supplements, they are containing doses way less than what is actually used in the studies they're citing. Nine times out of 10, the blueprint products contain the amount they should contain based on the studies that have been done. But that does not mean this is evidence-based. Again, many of these claims are based on just a few small studies. So just because one or two or three small studies used, let's say, 600 milligrams of ashwagandha and found a statistically significant reduction in anxiety symptoms doesn't mean that you need to take 600 milligrams of ashwagandha to help with your anxiety. They can't even tell us that ashwagandha actually helps with with anxiety. That's not how science works. Another example is this line in the email I got announcing the launch of the Blueprint stack, saying that it's built upon 1,000 plus clinical trials. Sounds great and sciencey, except it tells us nothing about the quality of the trials. But my favorite has to be this, where he links to supposedly scientific research. It's just his own little experiment. <laughs> it's just an anecdote. Now, I didn't bother doing the thing I really love to do, which is to take all the stuff that's in the supplement I'm looking at and buy everything, not actually buy it, but to look on Amazon and see how much it would be to buy everything individually. You know, again, we're talking about, what did I say? $361. Like, even if you were to buy everything on Amazon, it's still going to cost a lot of money. You know, what you're taking 67 powerful therapies, like, it's not going to be cheap. And again, most of you guys are not taken in by this. Like, you're smart enough not to to buy any of this. Although it is lower cost than fast food. <laughs> does that, what does that mean? Like, I don't even know where to start with that. What's that mean? Just because we differentiate supplements from drugs for reasons doesn't mean that supplements are inherently safe. They can have interactions with other supplements with prescribed drugs, just like drugs can. So if we look at glucosamine, for example, that's in the longevity mix. This interacts with blood thinning medication, certain cancer meds, Tylenol. There's also a case report of it possibly exacerbating someone's asthma symptoms, which leads to, I think, the big problem with supplement stacks like this one. If you're introducing just glucosamine or ashwagandha or whatever, and you start having some side effects, maybe you feel dizzy, gastrointestinal issues, whatever, you can be fairly certain that that's what's going on. At least you can say, oh, I just added in ashwagandha. I'm going to stop taking it and see if it clears up. If you notice side effects after starting longevity mix or the essential uh, soft gel or the red yeast rice or all of them, is it the garlic? Is it the probiotics in the multi? Is it the ashwagandha? Point is, please consider talking to a doctor before starting anything like this, any sort of supplement stack, especially if you already take supplements or are on medications. Chances are any doctor is going to encourage you to hang on to your money and just eat right and exercise. The thing that we can do today is eat more vegetables, go to sleep on time and exercise. These are immediately in our control. And this is getting what I'm trying to show. Yeah, this is really getting that message across, Brian. Good job. At the end of the day, Brian is selling a product, a very expensive product that could presumably net him a lot of money. He is incentivized to exaggerate the benefits. He is incentivized to say, yeah, 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 the basics, but also this is the 20% of the work that's giving you 80% of the benefits. 
What? So you're telling me if I take the supplement stack, but I get four hours of sleep a night and I overeat calories, I eat a bunch of, you know, donuts and shit and don't exercise, I'm still extending my longevity. Really? Regardless of his intentions, again, I don't think he is a grifter in the sense that he's like, haha, I'm gonna make money from this con. I think he believes in what he's doing based on all of the videos and everything I've watched. I could be wrong, obviously, I can't read the man's mind, but again, it doesn't matter because he's incentivized to believe that it's gonna work. As a consumer, kind of don't trust anything he says, right? Go to independent sources. I've referenced a couple of my favorites here, examine.com, consumerlab.com. They are paid sources. They don't have advertising or anything like that. So how they make money is with memberships. But even just going to like WebMD or Cleveland Clinic, you're going to get better information nine times out of 10 than from the person who's selling you the supplement. Be skeptical. And also, don't be so selfish. I don't know. Maybe that's unfair, but I I like if you're the type of person to spend close to $400 a month to maybe possibly extend your life for who knows how long, maybe kind of, maybe like really? If you have that kind of money and that's what you're using it for, it's like what's his name, that anti-aging researcher you know, criticizing Brian saying, hey, you know, you could you could take that money and actually put it into research instead of um, yourself. <laughs> like you're, you're using it to enrich yourself. Let's be real. That's what this is. But hey, I'll happily put 60 to $70 down on a new video game. Not only is it not helping other people, but it's arguably bad for me. So, you know, who am I to criticize? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. I would love to know your thoughts about the blueprint stack down below. How much you want to bet that olive oil tastes like shit? That's really what I'm most curious about. I want to taste that olive oil. Oh, I bet it's nasty. I think he said it's smooth and peppery. Although I think like all olive oil is disgusting raw. Like I can only cook with it. Even when I make salad dressings, I just use canola oil because it has basically no taste. Anyway, please like the video and subscribe if I didn't already say that. And thank you so much to my patrons and my members. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two patrons and members. One is a vlog and one is a controversial. I just posted the controversial topic for March. And that's it for me. Thanks again again, guys. New video soon.